Hey everybody, so today we're finally going to do it. We're going to do a little uh, how to get started in leatherwork video. There are a lot of them online, um, but we, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So we'll get to this in a minute. Uh, first, sponsored by Weaver Leathercraft, as always. Um, you can go to their website. There are a ton of videos. Chuck has done hundreds of videos on anything you could need to know in leatherwork and they have a bunch of free patterns that we designed, so no need to pay for any lessons when you're getting started. It's all there for you. So first thing we're gonna do um, is just do a tool rundown, and we're gonna split this into two categories. The first category is going to be things that you pretty much have to get at a leather-specific place, but it's only four things. Um, and this is, keep in mind, this isn't like a, you're in leather work already and you wanna know what tools to get. This is a, I wanna try leather work list. Right? Because you could try it and you could not like, like it. There's tons of different crafts, tons of different hobbies, tons of different skills. This might not be for you. So a lot of the stuff you can just kind of borrow from neighbors or parents or whatever. These are the things that you kind of just, you need to get that a lot of people aren't going to have in their junk drawer or their, or their um, workshop or shed or whatever. Uh, so the first thing is a set of stitching chisels. These are used to poke holes in the leather before you stitch. Uh, these are weaver stitching chisels. They're Pretty much the best quality to price ratio that I've ever used in any stitch, uh, stitching chisels, and I've used a lot of stitching chisels in the last 15 years. These are a really good bet. Um, the next is uh, specific stitching needles for leather. These are John James Sadler needles. Um, they're thicker, they fit the thread that we're going to use. The third thing, uh, wax thread. So plenty of places sell wax thread. Um, but all leather shops if you're going to order the rest of the stuff. You might as well pick up some wax thread while you're there. And the last thing, of course, leather. You need leather. Um, I recommend when you're just starting, and keep in mind this is like a dipping your toes in thing, get the cheapest leather in the style that you want to work with. So veg tan, we work with veg tan. Get the cheapest, junkiest veg tan that you can find because you want a lot of it that you can mess up. If you start out with really nice leather, you're not going to be able to mess, to learn. You're going to be too nervous. So find like a scrap, uh, like a scrap bundle or something for 30, 40 bucks. Get a, just get volume. Um, you want the weight. That's it. And we're going to show you how to practice and how to start later in this video. We're just getting the tools out of the way. And then the second list is going to be things that you probably have around the house. Um, first thing you're going to need, cutting mat, preferably self-healing. They last a lot longer. You cut your leather on this. Second thing you're gonna need is some sort of mallet. Now, we're gonna use a leather working mallet because it's all we have, and admittedly, this is kind of at the center of the Venn diagram between things you should buy that are leather specific and things that you probably have around the house. The biggest thing with a leather working mallet is you want something that has weight to it, and you want something that has a hard enough head to work to hit your tools, which are made out of metal, but the mallet isn't going to get damaged and it's not gonna be hard enough or like a metal hammer to hurt your tools. Um, when you see those kits online, you see a lot of like very heavy, uh, lightweight mallets. They're kind of useless. If you're gonna have to slam into something four, five, six times in a row, um, it's not gonna teach you anything about leather work. It's not gonna teach you control because a big part of control in leather work is knowing to use the right tools. So you want something, I, I think this is like a, 16, uh, 24 ounce mallet. You want something like pound and a half. Um, but a hard rubber, Durlin, whatever, that's what you want to start with. Next thing, rulers. Uh, metal rulers, most importantly, cork backed. Now, you want a cork backed ruler because leather is kind of slippery. So, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to put our ruler down and we're going to use our blade to cut the leather. If we're on a metal ruler with no cork, you're slipping around, it's how you get stitches. You want a cork back ruler, doesn't move at all, keeps you nice and safe. You still have to be careful when you cut, but this is the best way to go for a ruler. And that also brings us to a blade. Now you can cut leather thousands of different ways. We like a simple X-Acto blade. We use a number two blade on the X-Acto handle. This is a little bit bigger than the standard X-Acto. Um, so it's got a little bit more heft to cut through thicker leather if you're gonna do that, but it's also flexible enough to do small curves. You can use, um, you know, there are, like I said, thousands of different leather specific knives. You have um, skiving knives that people actually cut with. 
you have the uh, like the big traditional leather working knives. I like these the best. Um, it, it, like I said, personal preference, but to get started, you can get grab one of these out of the drawer and just give it a go. If you get into it and you like it, you can go and get a whole collection of knives that'll do specific things for you in the future. And the last bits and bobs, I guess, are just like little things that just really help. A lot of this is to finish edges and stuff. So you need a little bit of water, a couple grits of sandpaper. We use sort of, a, this is like an 80 or 120 grit. This is a 400 grit. That's to finish your edges. Uh, further to finish your edges, like I said, water, a little bit of canvas, and beeswax, and that's to burnish them. And then a lighter. Uh, this is to, once you clip your um, once you clip your thread in a stitch line, you seal it with a lighter. And that's it. That's pretty much everything you need to get started to uh, dip your toe in and decide whether you want to move further ahead in learning the craft. So we have the what, right? What, what tools do I need? Now we need the how. How do I get started in leather work? And I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, and it might be a little less fun than uh, download a pattern. This is how you stitch make something. But this is the way that really, really helped me get started. And it's learning fundamentals and basics. So the first thing, we're going to go step by step. The first thing you need to learn to do is to cut leather. And this is where the really cheap leather comes in. So we're going to grab a piece of leather. We're going to grab our ruler. And this is going to sound a little silly and seem a little superfluous, but hear me out. All you're going to do is cut the leather. That's all you're going to do. Put your ruler down, keep your fingers away from the edge of the ruler, and get a nice sharp blade. And just start cutting. You don't have to go through in one pass, right? Cut the leather. Now you know how it feels. And then we're just going to do little tiny slivers, maybe an eighth of an inch. And you're going to waste some leather in this. I mean, I wouldn't call it a waste because you're learning, but that's why you want leather no one would really make anything out of because you're not really ra wasting really good material. But you're paying for your education this way in material costs. And you're just gonna go through and you're just gonna cut strips of leather. You're gonna learn what pressure you need. You're gonna learn how much effort it takes to cut a straight line. You're gonna just do this over and over again until you get the feel of it. Once you get comfortable with your straight cuts, we're gonna go to curves. So I just have a little box here, pencil, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw little curved lines. Right? And I'm gonna take my blade, and without a ruler this time, I'm gonna cut these curves. This is like a five ounce veg tin. I would get something a little thinner. You can see I'm kind of pushing hard. Um, get something that's maybe a little bit waxy. If you have like a bridle at maybe three or four ounces, the, the wax is gonna help your blade glide through super, super easy. And you can work your way up, right? And then once you get comfortable on this, then you can do something that's a little more dry, like a regular veg tin, maybe a little bit of a heavier weight, and you can learn how to cut like this. But if you watch, this is going to go through much easier and you're still learning the basics. So once we've got our cutting down and, and we've practiced and we've cut up a whole bunch of leather and people think that we're going crazy, what's the next step? Well, now we have the fundamentals that we can cut a nice straight line. That means that we can practice making a nice straight stitch line. So first, we cut our nice piece of leather, and maybe we just do a little bit for this video. And we're going to be a little bit crafty. So normally in leather work, we would use a set of dividers, calipers to mark our stitch line. But this video is about an introduction to leather work. You're figuring out if this is something you want to invest your time in. So if you've bought a set of chisels, you have a ruler, just use your chisel to very lightly just trace a little line on the edge of the leather. And that's gonna show us where to stitch. So now we're gonna punch holes in our leather and then we can sew. Now, once you get into this, you can buy granite blocks and punch pads and stuff, but like we've said a bunch of times, we're just getting started. We're learning, we're, we're trying to figure this out, see if we like it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cutting mat, 
I'm gonna protect it with a scrap piece of leather because we are gonna be punching holes through this, but as you can see, you go through a little tiny bit, but you don't really damage. You go through cutting mats really quick if you're just punching directly into them, the leather helps. So I'm gonna take my piece of leather, and this, we're not making anything. All we're doing is practicing. We've got our straight cut, now we're gonna punch out some lines. And we're gonna take our chisels and we're gonna punch our holes through our leather on our line. And now, if you get a stitching set, a chisel set like the Weaver set, you're getting four different chisels. And for straight lines, you really only need the, I think it's six, six tooth. Um, you wanna use the biggest chisel that you can because it's a bunch of holes in a row and it's gonna give you the straightest line. You're gonna punch your first line and then instead of going over to your second line, you're actually gonna overlap two holes or one hole. You can do it however you want and that's gonna make sure that your spacing is consistent between holes on each uh, punch that you do. And I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna punch all the way down this line. All right, so you thought we were gonna sew next? We're not gonna sew next. Here's what we're gonna do. You've done this straight line. Maybe you've done five or six straight lines you've punched. You're learning how to get that stitch line to stay exactly where you want it. Next step, we're gonna do a curve line. Now curve lines are a little bit different, so we're gonna just trace out this curve, and this can be anything. Um, wider the curve, the easier it's gonna to be to learn, but then you can get into doing really tiny curves like this once you get good, right? Now with a curve line, we're not gonna use our giant chisel, more than likely. If it's a very wide curve, we could probably get away with it. But we're gonna use either the two, the two prong, the four prong, or maybe we're, it's so small that we're even using the single prong. The two ways that we can do this, we can put our first prong in the existing hole, and we can punch, and that way we, our spacing is, is good and we're punching a single hole. If you want to go a little faster, but you have to be more careful, we put our first prong in the hole, existing hole, and all we do is mark the second hole. So we have our mark, then we pick up our chisel, we put our first prong on the mark, and set our second, chisel, our second prong down ahead of it so that the stitching is still the same distance apart, but we're punching two new holes. And now it's not twice as fast, but you know, you save probably 30% of your time. So go down the line, we've learned how to cut leather, we've learned how to punch holes, and this all seems pretty menial, but this is the craft. You know, you have to get really good at very specific things to make very neat, tidy projects. Once you have your holes punched, you're gonna learn how to saddle stitch. Um, that's a whole video in itself. We've actually made that video already, so I'm gonna link that in the description so that you can go through once you get to this stage and you can watch that video. And now a lot of people stitch with a, a stitching pony. We, our video shows you how to stitch without a stitching pony. You're, you're welcome to get one. There's no wrong way to do that. But if you wanna give it a go without investing in some a big piece of equipment like that, um, they're not super expensive, but they are large. Give that a go first, and you can figure out whether hand stitching is for you or you want to go machine sewn, or if you're even interested in it at all. So the last skill that we need to learn before we can make a very simple leatherworking project is uh, finishing your edges. Now you can do this a bunch of different ways. This is a very utilitarian, very simple way that we've shown in a bunch of our videos. You're going to take your sandpaper, and I have my rougher grit, about 120, and my finer grit, about 400. Um, you can use the rougher grit if you want. If you did really get junky leather and it's it's really fibrous, you can sand it down with the with the 121st. This is still pretty tight grain, so I'm just going to use the 400. Hit it with a little 400, and we're almost going to start polishing it with this because the sandpaper is so fine. Now, once we have that done, all we're going to do is take a little bit of water, wet our edge a little bit. You don't want to soak it. We're just dampening it slightly. We take our canvas, this is any canvas fabric, uh, wood tool handles work well, you can use antler. Um, and we're just gonna rub back and forth and you'll feel it grip. But as you keep going, the heat and the, from the burnishing and the actual um, burnishing itself, they're gonna draw the oils out from the inside of the hide and our edge is gonna to start to get shiny and it's gonna, those fibers are gonna be sealed. 
And you can see there it gets a little slick, it gets a little squeaky. And that's all it takes. So then we can hit it with some beeswax. And so once you have these few skills, you've learned how to cut, you know how that feels, you've learned how to punch fairly straight, you've learned how to saddle stitch, and you even have a little burnishing, then you get into making some small stuff, right? And I'm I'm being I'm being a stickler here for technique because the better your technique, the more fun you're gonna have when you start making stuff. It's it's never feels good to hop into making a project and mess it up and, and you feel horrible about it. It's You're not motivated to restart. If you practice this way and then you jump into making small projects, you have a, um, a higher chance of success. And if you're successful at your first project, you're gonna wanna do your second project. If you're successful at your second project, you know, it keeps going and all of a sudden, 13 years later, you're making YouTube videos about leather work. And, uh, and so, once you have all of these things, maybe take a few days, maybe take a week after work, spend an hour just cutting leather, spend an hour just punching holes, put on a movie and learn how to saddle stitch, you know? Um, once you have those basics down, we're gonna get into a small project and I'm gonna show you how we put everything together to make a very simple card holder. And so once you've got all those skills under your belt, we can move to something like this. This is just gonna be a simple card holder. And the first thing I wanna point out is that I'm using sort of the edge of a hide, right? There's a lot of really good usable material here, but it's it's got some marks and stuff. It's, it's not a perfect pristine piece of leather. I personally think that's very important because you're not gonna be afraid to mess up on this. You're new to this, you're probably gonna, you know, I still mess up, everyone messes up, and you don't want the pressure of thinking you're gonna ruin a good piece of leather. So if you start off with leather that isn't super great, it's it's gonna be, you know, you can't use it for finished, really for finished projects anyway. It's gonna be less pressure on you and you're gonna be able to learn a lot more freely that way. And so we're just gonna use all the skills we went over to make a simple card holder. The first step, straight cut. Next step, a curve cut. And the next step we didn't practice, but it's just applying glue. So you, this is contact cement. You can use whatever sort of glue you like, but we're gonna apply some glue. And this is a little folded design. So we're gonna glue here, 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 and here. We're gonna get this glued up before we punch. And we're just gonna stick this glue down. And you can see here, I got a little bit of glue on the back of this, totally inadvertently, but this is a good illustration of why you wanna just kinda of work with leather scraps for your first few projects. You're just trying to learn the basics, get used to putting things together. The more you do this, the more comfortable you're gonna be when it comes time to make things out of full quality leather. And so now we need to punch holes in this to get stitching. So when you get to this stage, you're gluing a couple pieces together. The wing dividers do make a big difference in just marking your stitch line. It's just super easy, so you, adjust your wing dividers to say, well, let's say a little less than an eighth of an inch from your edge, and that gives you your stitch line, but it's not impossible to do with a ruler if you don't want to invest in wing dividers yet. So we're just gonna do the same thing we did when we were learning. We're gonna, we're gonna get our ruler where we want it, and we're just gonna use the tip of our single hole punch. You can also use like a nail or um, a scratch awl or something, and there's really not much difference between the two. And now, as we practiced before, we're just gonna punch our holes and then sew. And our last step, a little sandpaper, a little burnishing, and we're good to go. And here we go. This is our finished simple product. So we've learned how to cut, 
we've learned how to punch and how to sew, and we learned how to finish our edges. Really, really simple to just practice one step at a time and not put the stress of a finished piece as your first thing on you. And then when you get to making something, you're more calm. You know that you can do all of the steps, you just haven't put them together yet. And when you do, you get a nice, simple, functional piece. And so that's gonna be it. This is our sort of intro to leather work if you've never done anything before. We're using a couple simple, specific leather tools, and then we're using things we have around the house to just dip our toes in and see if it's something we wanna get into further. There's gonna be links in the description for all the tools that we used and materials. Um, and there's gonna be some more advanced stuff too if, you're, if you wanna get into things like um, skiving edges and you wanna get a nice mallet. Um, all of those things are gonna be available below. We are sponsored by Weaver, but we've used Weaver materials for 10 years plus, and all of the things that they make offer a great quality to price ratio, um, and you can use them professionally. And so thank you guys for watching so much, and we'll see you next time.